the new areas. So as we think about how the CRM 2016 or some of the recent other upgrades allow an organization to listen better in the customer service department, first and foremost is this idea of the interactive service hub and the dashboards available in it. We'll look at queues. Um, those have been around for a while, but they've gotten a pretty significant update. We'll talk about auto record creation and uh, general, generally about integration improvements. So the first thing to show you is, actually the very first thing I want to show you is this. This is a new part of the settings area. It's called service management inside of CRM. That area didn't exist before. And as you can see, if you'd gone and looked at anything like this before, you kind of had templates and that was about it. A few of these other things were scattered around in various places. Now we've got about a page and a half of different things we can do to configure the solution from within this area. So that alone tells you a lot about how much of an update the service area of CRM has received. We're actually going to come back to that and drill into some of those areas in just a minute. What I'm in right now is what's called the Interactive Service Hub. So uh, what you should know about this in general, if you're a CRM administrator or supporting a group of CRM users, this is only available for customer service right now. But this is, is the new user interface that you'll probably see gradually roll across all the different parts of CRM over the next several releases. So you'll start to see more sales and marketing functionality all with the same kind of look and feel. You can still use the classic interface or you can come over and use this interface. I don't know if Microsoft will keep it that way and allow you to toggle or if the plan is to long term um, turn off the old interface and switch this one on. But this one's got a lot of interesting functionality in it. We're going to spend a lot of time in it today. So um, um, I'm, I'm putting this under all, almost all the categories, by the way, because it touches on all parts of listen, understand, connect, and know. So if I look at this interactive service experience, I can see that I've got what feels a lot like a dashboard in CRM, but it combines this new type of view also. And it's very interactive, so if I change something about this, for instance, if I change this to look at today's information, it's going to blank everything out because this is a demo I set up about three months ago. So you can see my dashboards, my individual charts and views are now all tied in. They're linked together. They're interactive one with another. So when I change one thing, the entire page changes to show me what I'm looking at. It's also interactive in the sense that I can now look at my workload and try to work it based on what I see here. For example, let's say I'm a subject matter expert in the Contoso M0125. If I click that tag, I'm immediately going to be taken to see just the cases that have to do with that particular product. And if I want to turn off the filters, I can do that here. If I'm uh, a social uh, channel person and I'm supposed to work on everything that's coming in through Facebook or Twitter, I could come over here and I could click on the items that have come in through Twitter. And again, I filtered it down just by clicking on that. These are all designable. These are all things that you can control as an administrator. Uh, that's still sort of an early version of this, so the limitations. But your views now are actually little forms. So where you used to have a view and you would say, you know, here's what's going to appear in each row. Now my views are cards is what they're called. So it's a form type called card. And I can have as many lines as I want on it. And I can even have it set up so I can zoom into it. I don't think I have this one set up to zoom in for more information. But I could do that if I wanted to set it up. And I can multi-select these just like I could other views before and perform operations against those. So um, why it's important to have that more interactive experience, let's, let's for example say that you're in higher education and maybe you have issues associated with students where time is going to play a factor. For instance, let's say a student may not get admitted uh, to, on time or maybe doesn't graduate on time as they're expecting to if you don't resolve a specific case for them like am I doing everything I need to do to fulfill the requirements for my degree. So you might have to balance that with other issues that may have to do with something like housing or maybe a professor's logged in issue with a lecture hall that's not time intensive. By having this interactive service hub experience you can easily give people the ability to manage those much more complex workloads without having to train them on a lot of different views or clicking headers and those kinds of things. They can just get into this and manage their day pretty interactively. Now, another thing, we're going we're gonna to spend a lot of time in the Interactive Service Hub. Um, this is another part of the Interactive Service Hub. So I'm going to switch to this view. This is queues. 
So queues are basically a way to share workloads across one or more teams. And I could have put them into that nice view with all the dashboards in it as well if I'd wanted to. But as an example, let's say you have incoming customer issues. And the first available person with access to the queue could take it out of the queue and handle it. But items might also get reassigned based on priority, channel, subject matter expertise, or escalation. So, so as, a, as a specific example, let's say you have a, a, a case come into a queue, and the person who's looking at that queue says, you know, I don't have the expertise to, to work this item. I can just come in here, and I can reassign it to someone else. I can route it to someone else who has the expertise to work it. I can also put records of any type into a queue. You can see these first four are accounts. The rest of them are cases. So you can have things in queues, such as um, um, yeah, cases that people need to work. You can have different queues by case type. So you could have a social queue versus um, an email queue. Uh, and you can have non-case queues as well. So you might say, uh, we've got a queue of orders that need to be processed. I want to put those in a queue. And then the first customer service rep who's available can go ahead and push those orders through or the first order off the top of the shelf. So these are very flexible. You can, you can share workloads across a diverse range of people using queues, and they can work with any record type. So they've gotten a pretty significant upgrade since um, uh, I think 2013 is where most of this new functionality came in. If I go back to the service management area, there's another new area here called auto record creation. So if we take a look at this, I'll open this up a little bit. Auto, auto record creation allows channel data coming from other sources into CRM. So what the heck does that mean? If you have an email come in, or if you have this integrated with a social tool like Microsoft Social Engagement, or if a user creates an activity, you can have those automatically create a new record associated with them. So for example, if you have an email queue that you say, hey, just send us an email to support at c5insight.com if you need support, and that's going to get routed correctly. Well, you can have that automatically create a case. So as soon as something comes into that support queue, it, I'm sorry, in a support email address, it can automatically create a case in CRM. You can actually parse data out of it using um, OData constructs for it. So you can include data in there that you can parse out and use to populate the case record. You can even have it automatically modify uh, records. So if an email comes into a queue, it can actually modify that case saying, hey, here's a new communication from this customer. Or maybe you even allow them to set the case as closed just by um, replying with the word close in it. And you can automatically update that record. And you can see I've got a lot of uh, flexibility for what's the condition, what's in this email that I'm going to use to decide whether I'm going to create or modify a record. Um, almost like workflows, for here I can have actions to create records of any type with full um, mail merge type of capabilities here. But I can also have other actions too. So I can update this record or other records. I can respond with an email. I can fire off a workflow or something like that. So auto record creation is basically a way of doing integration without having to write a lot of code or have a custom integration tool. And it works smoothly. Not for all circumstances, but it works well for many things.